Hello everybody, welcome to Leet Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Leet Wine TV. Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host Mark Fusker here for day two of Provine. So I only got to go to two of the three halls I wanted to go to yesterday. That'd be hall 17 and 16. I mean, I walked through 15, but I'll head back there probably tomorrow. Uh, today is halls 14, 13, 12, and 11. Yeah, if I only did two halls yesterday, how am I gonna do four today? Well, I only have a couple appointments that are short today. Yesterday was a little bit of a, of a um, aggressive schedule, so to speak. But um, yeah, let's go. Uh, where, where am I at right now? This is, we're in Germany. So I see the faults. So uh, I actually just saw Sophia in the elevator uh, going down from the um, parking garage. And she was like, recognize me? <laughs> so because um, I had a bit of a, uh, let's just say, hard time getting back here today. It was harder today than yesterday. And then I left my wallet in the car and all, you know, whatever. So now I'm here. It's a we're going to do some German stuff and uh, we're going to have some good time. Let's uh, check out the hall. So as you can see, I mean, yeah, I commented about yesterday's, the uh, Italy hall being all fashionable and all that, but you can see, I mean, these things are huge. These, I mean, they have some smaller uh, little booths, but then you have like these little almost restaurant style and almost every hall has a uh, some type of food area. So, but it looks fairly German to me, you know? Definitely a different style here versus Italy. Um, really cool, I have no idea what's over here. Oh, more stuff. Oh, the Pradekat. So, uh, the VDP. So I was at their tasting yesterday and uh, there was like uh, five or six, seven producers. So I got all kinds of stuff here. Anyway, I'm gonna try to find some something to taste and uh, we'll be back. All right, everybody, welcome uh, to day two on Provine. Uh, I've got a quick little interview with Johannes Hart. Um, what I've learned during Provine or right before Provine is it's like going to harvest. A lot of times wineries don't have a lot of time to, to meet with you uh, or at least meet with me on like my extended tours, um, but we're able to spend about 10 minutes. So we're gonna talk a little bit about um, everything and uh, Johannes, it's, it's, tell us a little bit about the winery and you. Yeah, right, thank you. Uh, the Wine with Heart, uh, we are producing and sitting in the middle Mosul, uh, producing Riesling only, 100%. And uh, this is for a very long time. Um, so our family tradition in terms of winemaking goes back until 1337. So we are getting close to the 700 years mark. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Now you know why we're hanging out. <laughs> <laughs> right, and we've committed completely to Riesling, like I said before, yeah. uh, and it's in it's all its styles of uh, that it comes to, like so completely dry style, but even up to the really sweet stuff that's uh, what we are famous for and what Ries uh, what especially Mosel can do best. Okay. Uh, Mosel with its slate soil that's making these very special uh, acidity driven and very aromatic uh, Riesling wines, which are also very very age worthy. So we really can keep these wines 10, 20, up to 30 years, no problem. Yeah, very nice. Um, so uh, uh, you you got a, like so you got a wide range of wines. Um, what do we what do we have in the glass right now? I put a, a very classic wine of ours uh, from our best vineyard side, uh, Gold Tripsen in Peaceport. Okay. Um, it's a, it's a spat laser quality, so a, kind of a late harvest wine, but made from completely clean, very ripe but clean fruit. No botrytis in here. Uh, it comes so to say in a fruity sweet style, uh, and it is a 2010 vintage, so okay. it has its eight years in the bottle, uh, and that enhances the complexity, the depth of the wine, and that's okay. how I like to drink my spat laser. So yeah, to say. right. <laughs> So I was able to try this a little bit earlier uh, today, and um, you know the complexity is, is it. What I've learned not just from this one, but from a lot of these aged rieslings is that 
that's when you really want to drink them. I mean, yeah, they're refreshing when they're young, yep. you know, a year or two old. But when you get that nine, ten years of age on there, they really get that complexity. And I can tell you, I mean, just the the, the aromatics on here are are very rich. Um, the, the fruit, it feels like it's an extra ripeness to the fruit. Um, and I get a lot of the, I get a lot actually for me like melon. Um, fun fact, I guess I'm a fun fact, but unusual fact for me was at breakfast this morning, I had a yellow honeydew. I didn't know they came in yellow. I thought they were all green on the, oh, yeah. on the, the skins. <laughs> I guess, I guess we're just, the United States, we're insulated. We only get green skin honeydews. I, or maybe we do get yellow and I just never saw it, but, but it kind of like, I had another wine earlier today, I had the same thing. I was like, mm -hmm. I feel like I get the yellow fruit. Mm -hmm. um, yep. And even though we're, we're at that straight laser level, you know, it's not really, really sweet, but it's got that good balance with, um, with the acidity. Um, the complexity is really there. I even get like... Okay, this is weird because I, I, when I had this earlier, I did yeah. not get this. I get like yeah. a buttery finish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I didn't get it earlier. Um, it's like, okay, again, something I've learned in Germany, pretzels and butter. Pretzels and butter. Yeah, yeah. That was kind of unusual. And I'm not saying I get pretzel out of it, but there's like that that kind of that kind of um, combination. Yeah, like a little buttery, buttery, a little yeah. bit creaminess. Yeah. yeah. We, we keep our wines quite a bit on the fine leaves for a while, so we don't bottle too yeah. early. So we get, get a little bit more extra um, complexity and length in there. Yeah. Um, and that might be a result from that. So uh, yeah. recently also another guy told me that his, our wines, uh, when they're getting older, get a little bit of an umami character. There's okay, a yeah. little bit really and richness in a way, but still with the acidity, so it's still uplifting. It's still a fine, right. elegant wine, not getting just too rich and um, powerful. And let me by this is not like a Chardonnay buttery. No, this no. is not like that. It's just it's just like this. I don't know. It just it was just like a, a hint. It like mm -hmm. it's kind of fleeting. Like whoa. Yeah. But yeah, it's a very delicious wine. Um, and yeah, I mean, I was telling another producer right before I came back here um, that uh, this trip is kind of like my Burgundy trip. It gives me a huge or a bitter, bigger, whatever appreciation of Riesling that I already had. Mm -hmm. I mean, I always knew that Riesling was a really good grape. It's a great grape, makes great wines. I'm like, yeah, I like them. And I've had really good ones. But when you're surrounded by it, you kind of immerse yourself in yeah. it. It, it. You start, your eyes really start to open because mm -hmm. instead of like individual examples here and there, you're, yep. you're really exposed to a whole bunch. So, um, and your wines are, are fantastic. So. Thank you very much. This is great. Um, do you have anything else you want to like talk about? You know, this is just a really quick. This is meant to be really quick, not meant to be extended interview. Um, yeah, I, I God, that butter is just like I don't know. I, just, I guess sometimes you get fixated on certain things. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, um, so it's, it's it's delicious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes you get a little bit of it with the sweetness, it turns a bit little, little hints of caramel. So sometimes right, I say a little yeah. bit something, some some toffee. Um, I'm looking for something. Can't remember now exactly what I'm trying to. Uh, but yeah, I get the butter, battery caramel. Yeah, uh, I, I see the toffee on there too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like, uh, and so it's like a, like an actual like, um, uh, not not like a toffee candy, but like the toffee, like the hard, mm -hmm. like the hard um, toffee. I mean, I don't know, with the, like a little bit of the crunch to it. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and has that that confectionery, I guess maybe a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's a beautiful wine. Um, Folks, uh, we're we're gonna we're gonna wrap this up because he's got a lot of people that want to taste some more. So um, I really appreciate you spending a few minutes with me. <laughs> um, and um, just yeah, stay tuned. I'll have I should have some more little snippets here for the rest of the day. And uh, if nothing else, will be some more just me walking around the provine. Thank you. Appreciate sure. it. Thank you. What's right. my pleasure? Awesome. So it's lunchtime here, and uh, every hall has some type of food area sometimes like this is like more an established food area some of the halls actually have like a little area off to the side in the hall you can get food so I got I got this um, pasta dish there you go we'll see we'll see how it is I'm not used to eating Italian food outside of the United States so and since I got Italian food there we go got a little Chianti here we'll see how it is
Very pleasant drinking. Um, can't read the producer. It's a 2016. I'll take a picture of it uh, with the phone and I'll insert it into the video here. How's the pasta? It's supposed to be like a meat type of dish. Lots of veggies in here. I'm sorry, but I'm super, I'm super picky. Um, but we'll try it out. It smells pretty good. Give me to shake everything. It's all right. Got lots of peppers in here. Zucchini. So it really adds to the flavor of the sauce. Not what I'm used to eating, but there's a lot of vegetables over here, uh, at least in, in Italian sauces from what I can tell. It's pretty good. All right, done with lunch. So I'm still in the Germany hall, heading over to uh, Dr. Pauli Bergweiler. Uh, have a little quick tasting with him. I don't think, I won't, probably won't have any time to do like a little interview, but maybe I have a 115 appointment. That's in 45 minutes. So uh, heading over there and uh, looking forward to it. Okay, so I'm making this little kind of short video. Um, I, I should have done this like the day of or like so I got back. Um, but I did, I went, I stopped by Polly Bergweiler um, in, between, in between these two segments here and uh, amazing tasting. We had a lot of 18s, uh, a lot of barrel samples uh, from a lot of places. Actually, a lot of places were very similar to where I'd gone with Dr. Lawson um, and also Dr. Tanner. So I got to taste some Burncastle, Burncastle Dr. Beth Stuba, which is a bathhouse, if you remember that, from, uh, uh, I honestly can't remember which, I think it was the Lawson one we talked about bathhouses, um, because Bad is bath in German. Um, and we also went to the Erzig Versgarden, uh, Erziger, Erziger Wurzgarten. I uh, had some of that from uh, Bergweiler and uh, some cool stuff. And we also had a 1976 uh, Baron Auschlese, which was stellar. Um, this trip between the three places I visited, plus uh, the Bergweiler and other Rieslings that I tasted the day before, that day, and the third day, uh, these aged Rieslings are just amazing. Like, I mean, I've had some aged wines, you know, Burgundies and Bordeaux's and, you know, other and other wines that, you know, dated back, you know, 10, 20, 30 years. I mean, I have some that are 10 to almost 20 years old myself. Uh, I've, I've acquired over the past few years. Um, but I, I have to say that the Riesling grape, when it ages well, um, just stays so delicious. And not that it's fresh. I mean, it is. But it doesn't have like red wine when it ages. It gets that dusty old taste to it. Um, and even, you know, I haven't had a lot of old white burgundies, but some other older white wines I've had, you know, they, they get that matterized, oxidized flavor to them. Um, whereas these Rieslings, you know, from the 70s and 80s, uh, I don't think I had any 60s, but 70s and 80s, you know, and 90s, um, they still had the fruit to them. I, I just, I never really caught on how great of a grape Riesling is. Now I get it. And now I know why, you know, Paul Greco over at Terroir New York is like a fiend about Riesling and did, you know, the summer of Riesling. So anyway, um, so enough of that. So the Bergweiler, Bergweiler tasting, amazing. I, I was there for what, about half an hour tasting with them. And I really wish I had, you know, done, uh, done video with that. Um, so yeah, uh, enjoy the rest of the episode. I thought I'd give you a little tour of the hall too. Okay, so um, on to the next, on to the next place, man. I'm going to Hall 12 here. I'm actually late. I don't know if I'll be able to do this tasting appointment. 
but I'm supposed to go to um, Noelia Ribera. Oh, sorry, Bodegas Passion. I'm going to meet with Noelia Ribera. Uh, I just uh, had my um, tasting with um, uh, Polly, Dr. Polly Bergweiler. Um, amazing wines. Dude, there's a freaking Rolls Royce here. Check this out. Whoop. Yeah. Oh, sorry. There we go. Come on. There we go. Come on. Anyway, uh, so outside messed up the camera. So, yeah, I have to figure out where I'm going with this. I'm in Hall 12, and I got to go to... Where am I going here? G27. So I got to find G27. Hey, I'm in the right... I'm in the right... Uh, I'm in the right row here. So let's check out the Spain Hall. There we go. So I'm going to try to spend some time here, um, but I also need to go to Hall 13 just for a little bit, just to check it out. But um, we got all kinds of stuff here. We got, oh, hold on. I got to take a picture of this while I'm standing here. So this is kind of an inside joke with a lot of Psalms in Texas, this Underberg thing. So. I'm gonna take a picture real quick. And um, it's, um, actually I can't describe what it is. It's kind of like, I don't know, maybe it's like a, um, it's not a Jägermeister, but it's it's like a, I don't know, it's a little core of some sort. But I gotta take a picture real quick and send it to my, send it to my uh, Texas brethren, just so that, uh, I actually was looking for this earlier. And uh, now I see it's here. Bam. Picture taken. You just heard the little thing. All right, so I already, I already forgot the uh, thing I'm going to. 27. Anyway, so I'm going to definitely spend some time here after this, uh, after this meeting. And um, I'm looking forward to that. Oh, yeah, we got Beaujolais. So this is kind of like a catch-all uh, haul, I think. So, all right. All right, I'm going to stop recording because I'm going to find where I'm supposed to be. I think I walked by it. All right, so I just finished my appointment. Um, so it was interesting. Not necessarily my style, but I can see that there's a market for it. So it was a blue wine, and there was also a green wine that has a cannabis... Let's try to recenter. There we go. Uh, it has a cannabis um, aroma more than a flavor. It's a vino ver I'm sorry, verdejo is the uh, grape. And they won't say how they get the green color on it. It says a secret. So, okay. Um, then I had a blue wine, which is a Chardonnay. And basically what they do is they isolate the chemical or whatever it is that causes the blue component in the anthocyanins, anthocyanins uh, to get the blue color. And part of me was kind of like, yeah, it's a bit like blueberry, maybe because it's blue. Just like the green wine, I got like green apple out of it. Um, the cannabis, you get, the, you get it on the aroma and it's really slight, which is good because cannabis has a very, very uh, overpowering um, aroma and you don't get on the, you don't get on the pile at all. It's a little more just like campfire smoke than anything else. So I like the green one better than the blue one. I told them that. Um, so, I mean, there's definitely a market for it. Uh, it's I think more marketing than anything else, but, um, it wasn't a bad wine, but maybe not quite my style on either one. So now where am I at? So now I'm in hall 13 because that's where I'm supposed to be today. So let's check it out. Let's kind of walk around Hall 13 a little bit. It's kind of a mishmash of stuff. It looks like you got some Spain here and some other stuff. Anyway, I'll, sh I'll show you what I see.
Yeah, it seems kind of like a collection of things. So we got uh, Frisionet, Frisionet, or whatever it's actually pronounced, not Frisione. Um, it's actually a Spanish uh, wine company. And they do really, really good um, cavas. So you know, if you're looking for sparkling without spending the champagne price, cava as a category is really good. And Frictionet does a really good job. Hey, it's the Corvin people. Hey, by the way, uh, they sent me a new unit, but I don't know if the dude is here. So we're going to stop by. All right, so I just finished talking to the Corvin guy, and I just did a whole video without recording. So I'm going to head back over to Corvin and get a shot. Anyway, we talked about some cool stuff. Um, actually, I have my unit is has arrived at home. I have a new unit replacement unit. I don't know exactly which one I got. I don't know if I got the entry level or if I got a fancier one, but they're all exactly the same. They're just more about look, you know, like if you want to match something in your kitchen, whatever, something shiny, something something colorful, whatever. Uh, they're all basically the same. Um, but then we also talked about, um, here it is. Here we go. So that's, there we go. And anyway, now we're walking back. So anyway, a gentleman's name was Robert. He was very, very informative, uh, very nice. Um, he was actually talking to somebody about the differences between the, uh, the, the fancy color ones and then the regular just like white entry level one. And like I said, they're functionally the same. Just comes a matter of, do you want something that looks like nice in your kitchen or do you just want function? So function over fashion or fashion over function or form. Um, then he also kind of demonstrated the Model 11 for me. It is very, very pricey and it's not for everybody. Um, it's like a thousand dollars, like 999 US. And it's got a lot of features to it. Um, it uses a special double needle. So one, one of the uh, holes or one of the tubes in the needle pushes out the gas and then the other tube uh, is for the wine instead of like the regular needle which you push you push the gas and then you release the button and then it pushes the wine out uh, you can adjust the pour speed so you don't have you it's, you don't have like actually you don't have like a fast pour needle you don't have a vintage needle you have one needle um and then you uh you can adjust how much gas is going in there to adjust your your pour speed you can also kind of like a default sip or glass and then you can kind of modify that uh, you can also the app and this is using the app on your phone to modify these things um, you can also uh, use the app to scan the wines and it will uses it uses the it uses delectable which is its own app so you can keep track of your seller and I'm assuming it keeps track of your um, usage of the wine so it comes with a lot of like stuff and if you want to you know if it's if that price point is worth it then it's a pretty cool unit i mean i have to admit um but if, if you don't really care about that kind of stuff then the the regular unit is just fine anyway i'm kind of walking around here people look at me funny because well they do and uh, i'm gonna i'm gonna find some stuff to taste all right so i just finished having some uh a couple different producers of swiss wine uh some grapes i've never had before um, really interesting. Um, the two Merlots I had, pretty tannic for Merlot, but very delicious. Um, so I'm standing in front of the Vin Naturel. Sorry, I'm all up, all up in there. Um, it's apparently all the organic wines, and um, I'm, not because I'm against organic wine. I think it's cool stuff, but let me show you why I'm probably not going to go over there. Yeah, it is a mob. It's a madhouse over there. So that might be something maybe tomorrow I'll check it out. I don't know. Um, maybe not. Anyway, I just want to show you that they have a whole section for organic wine. Not that there aren't any organic, other organic wines out there because I actually had some organic wines in other areas but they have like this like collection so you can look for that because it's a thing anyway uh, i'm just looking for another thing to taste i'm gonna go hit the, the other dr tanish here in a little bit so i'm just kind of walking around to see what else i can do all right so i just had an amazing tasting 
with uh, Max over at uh, Dr. H. Tanish. Uh, so there's two Dr. Tanishes, um, and they both have holdings in the doctor. There's a couple other uh, wineries that have some smaller holdings, but um, so I basically, I basically have now tasted with the two best producers of the Dr. Vineyard, and it was amazing. Uh, we had an awesome time. He also had this, he also has some like freaky deaky wines. Uh, he had like this orange wine, uh, which is Riesling orange, and super herbal, um, really, really nice. And then he has this Pinot Noir. So they don't really do a lot of Pinot Noir in the Mosul, but his Pinot Noir was, it was different. Uh, it was not like any other Pinot Noir I've ever had. I actually told me, it reminded me of a dish I had um, up in the Naha at this restaurant that uh, Ann Donhoff had taken me to. Uh, this black sausage that had like a, a bit of cabbage with like this special sauce. Um, Cause I was like, hey, I don't want to like, I don't want to like you know, say anything wrong by saying I get cabbage out of it because cabbage can be uh, a bad thing in wine, more like if it's a sauerkraut uh, flavor or aroma. But um, it was like just the right, just the right uh, flavor of cabbage, and with the um, uh, with the meaty quality, um, and that wasn't like the overriding thing. It was just kind of there. But uh, he's he's a character. He, uh, he's awesome. And, uh, you know, I, this, this trip here, just the other German producers I've met, I really want to come back and do more Germany stuff, but, you know, I still, have, I still have to go back to Bordeaux. Anyway, so now I'm in Hall 12. I had an appointment that I completely have, you know, missed. So I'm just going to walk around uh, Hall 12, and then I think, I don't think I had Hall 11 as... I think Hall 12 was my, um, oh, it was Hall 11. So I haven't even gone to Hall 11 today. So we're going to Hall 11. Why not? All right, I made it to Hall 11. So it's all about France in here. Uh, we got, I just walked by all the Alsace. Uh, unfortunately, Trimbach's not here, um, which I already knew, but I walked by real quick to see if they were around. Uh, I'm staying in front of the uh, Bordeaux, so let's go over there. So I'm going to walk around here. I actually didn't look to see if anyone I've visited in Bordeaux is here. Um, so I'm just going to walk around. If I see somebody I know, well, that I've been to, I'm going to stop by. But uh, I never had to come back to this place. It's been way too long since I've been there, and I need to visit them again and try to revisit a couple people that were super, super awesome and visit some other places. So we're just going to kind of walk around and see what I got here. All right, everybody. So this is going to wrap for day two of Provine. Uh, I just had an amazing taste in, with uh, the uh, Chaputier people, uh, Michel Chaputier, not, he's not there, but uh, one of the representatives. Um, just a, a, a wide range of their wines, you know, all, all, almost all of them were Rhone wines, so I did get to try this really cool Belle Haute um, that was pretty amazing, actually. Um, so if I do get a sample of that, I will have already tasted it, but you know, I'll definitely give an awesome review on it because it was pretty good. Not pretty, it was really good. Um, and then I got dinner tonight with um, Ali Pasqua, who I interviewed uh, during um, my first day at Provine. And that was the last interview before all my Provine coverage. So we got dinner. So I got get I got like an hour to walk all the way to the press center get everything packed up, hit my car, not hit my car, get to my car, which is another long walk, go back to the hotel, so I can take a cab for dinner, because I'm definitely going to enjoy tonight, so I might be a couple minutes late for them, um, but yeah, it's been an amazing experience, it's obviously there's no way to hit every single thing at Provine, you have to pick and choose. And there's so many people that, you know, want to say hi to you. And, you know, um, uh, when you put yourself out there for appointments, you know, I probably had to decline 20 or 30 uh, requests because I wasn't going to be in the area at the time they wanted to see me. I just have one more day. So I'm actually kind of walking through one of the halls I'll be in tomorrow. And, um, yeah, we're going to have a lot of fun. 
All right, folks, that's going to do it for today's episode. For this week's episode, yes, I, yet again, I am not in the studio and I didn't do an ending shot while I was at Provine. I think I was more concerned about getting to the, uh, to the uh, Pasqua uh, dinner that night because uh, I had to get back. to. I, I, I explained it, why. Um, so I was probably more concentrated on doing that and then like trying to do an ending video. Uh, but also looking at some of my videos, um, there were things I thought I took video of and I never did. And then I also had stuff where I have audio of something, but I don't have video or I have video, but no audio from here. So that's why the video, that's why the audio sometimes sounds a little bit off or a little bit, you know, like different. Um, but yeah. Um, so thanks for stopping by for this week. Uh, again, Provine, amazing show or amazing show, amazing you know, experience. Uh, if you're in the trade and you're able to go to it, I highly recommend it. Uh, again, episode 449, you'll have the beginner's guide to Provine, really geared more towards the press being part of media. But if you're just an attendee as a buyer, um, then it, 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 a lot of it will, will apply to you. Uh, anyway, so just click the links above to find me up. I'll have links below for everything about day two of Provine for me. Uh, you can hit the uh, donate button over there. Uh, kind of over there, kind of down. Um, if you want to throw some ducats my way. And uh, also don't forget, uh, 10th anniversary show, May 20th here in San Antonio. Um, if you haven't gotten a ticket yet, if you live, if you're in, if you're in town or will be in town and like to go and I haven't sold out yet, um, you know, send me, send me a note, uh, however you want to do it. And uh, if I've got tickets still available, I'll send you, uh, I'll send you a link to the invite because uh, it's a private, it's a private event, so I don't have just anyone show up because I only have, you know, twenty some odd total seats, um, and that's it. We'll see everyone again next time.